This video is about the idle gears. On this gear train, we have three gears. This one here will be my driver gear, and this one will be considered my driven gear. The one in the middle is called a idle gear. Okay, so I just wanna show on this one that the idle gear is just going to make the ones on the outside, the driven and the driver gear, it's just going to make them go in the same direction. Right? So they're going a clockwise direction. If I had the two gears next to each other, then the driver gear would be going clockwise and the driven gear would be going counterclockwise. But because of the idle gear, it allows it to go the same direction. The idle gear is just there to change that direction, so they're going in the same direction. But as you can tell, the dots move at the same rate. So that idle gear does not change your gear ratio in any way. Sometimes you may have more than one idle gear. In this one here, we've got the driver gear going in a counterclockwise direction which means the next one would go in a clockwise, the next would go in a counterclockwise, and then the last one would go in a clockwise direction. All right, let's go ahead and work this example. We're gonna go ahead and work it completely out. And just like whenever we talked about pulleys and we said that you take those uh, mechanical advantages and you multiply them all together to get the total mechanical advantage, we're going to look at gears the same way. So we're going to look at this as, to begin with, our driver. This is our in, and this one will be our out. So let's go ahead and write that down. Our number of teeth out is going to be 60, and my number of teeth in is 36. So now I'm going to multiply it by the next gear ratio. All right, so now this 36 tooth gear is driving the next idle gear, which is 12. So I'm going to say then that my out is going to be 12 and my in is 60. Okay, so now the next set, we have the little gear here is now going to actually be rotating the larger gear. So this one, this idle gear, is going to be considered my in, and this one, my driven gear, is going to be considered my out. So looking at that then, our out is 84, and our in is 12. Now this is where we can go ahead and look and see mathematically how our driv the driver gear here can just be put directly for gear ratio to the driven gear. Because as you can see, each one of these are canceling out. So our idle gears, those ratios are canceling out and they're just leaving my driven gear, which is this 84, and this N, which is my driver gear, which is 36. So it makes the math a lot easier when you have a single gear train like this in just leaving those idle gears out and make it to where it is out over in. So that's going to give us 7 over 3, which works out to be a 2.33 to 1 gear ratio. Now that I know that I can look at this as my in or driver and my out or driven, then I can go ahead and work this uh, problem that says what is the torque of the driven gear? All right, so my uh, number of teeth out, which is 84, divided by my number of teeth in, which was 36, equals my torque out, which is what I'm trying to find, over my torque in, which is five foot-pounds. Now I know because I'm going from a smaller gear to 
a larger gear, that this number should be larger than 5. Alright, so I take 84 times 5, and I divide it by 36, and that is going to give me 11.7 foot-pounds. As you can tell, this should be about 2.3 times 5, because my gear ratio was 2.3. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to talk about compound gears.